This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV Profit. It's 2 p.m. and time for the headlines on Power Lunch. Ulhasnagar demolitions have begun and the UMC Commissioner S.D. Patil has arrived at the location. So far, only three out of the 850 buildings have been demolished and the government has to submit a progress report by 11th of January. 3,000 policemen have turned up to implement the 29 November Bombay High Court order that says all illegal structures here should be demolished. Ulas Nagar, let me remind you, is a township of refugees which has witnessed bitter clashes over the demolition drive. And time is running out for the 10 Lok Sabha MPs charged in the cash for question scam. The leader of the Lok Sabha, Pranam Mukherjee, has introduced a resolution saying that all 10 Lok Sabha MPs should be expelled. The Pavan Bansal panel's report yesterday said all 10 Lok Sabha MPs and one Rajya Sabha MP caught on camera taking bribes for asking questions in Parliament should be expelled. The BJP and the BSP said they would oppose any immediate move for the expulsion. It is not a question of legality. It's a question to ask ourselves, to ask our conscience, what should we do in this given situation? If we go through the report, sir, we will find none of the honorable members who were asked, given the chance, to explain their conduct. And when some of them pointed out that these may be doctored, these may not represent the thing in its entirety, but when they were offered, that is examined. Foreign Secretary Sham Saran has concluded his two-day visit to Washington, D.C. And during his trip, he met with Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice, Under Secretary of State Nicholas Burns, and senior officials from the Departments of Defense and Commerce. But perhaps his most crucial meeting on was on Thursday with the Chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, Senator Richard Luger. The nuclear deal with Washington can only be implemented fully with congressional approval. And recently, two lawmakers proposed a resolution urging the Congress to reject the deal. Well, those were the top news stories at this hour, but uh, continue watching Power Lunch with Shivnath Takral. Welcome back. Uh, you are watching Power Lunch on NETV Profit. Uh, we are joined by a special guest uh, all the way from Kuwait, Marcos Williams, fund manager and consultant. India fund, the money which was raised just now in the Middle East. But before we go to him, we'll quickly take a look at the markets. Down 97 still. And you're looking at Nifty, which is also sharply down. So it's an all-round selling coming in today. But uh, let's welcome Mr. Marcos Williams. Mr. Williams, thanks so much for joining us on NDTV. Good to have you on the show. We are talking to you about this fund that you've raised. And obviously, you're extending the date of that fund. May I ask you, why are you doing that? Have you not raised enough capital? Or is it because the appetite is too strong? Uh, the appetite is too strong. In addition to that, there is a lot of uh, IMD money which is flowing into Kuwait uh, on the 29th. So we had a request from uh, a lot of NRA associations requesting us to extend it by at least a week. Right, sir. You've been uh, put in charge of this. You're looking at uh, investing in the equity markets. It's one of the first ever time that such a fund has been launched uh, under your uh, guidance for the specifically for the Indian market. By when do you think the money will start flowing in? Uh, we expect the money to flow in very quickly uh, between the second and the third week of uh, January 2006. Right, so we will see a big bang January, uh, thanks to you in the markets. Uh, let me get a sense of uh, the kind of strate strategic uh, initiatives you'll be taking. How would this be special? And looking at your returns that you're expecting, it's a bit too conservative given the way the Indian markets have surged. Why are you being so conservative? Uh, see, it's importantly we, we have to realize that this is a Sharia fund. And in a Sharia fund, this is, uh, instantly, this is the world's first Sharia fund. And we are looking at investing in, in a select universe of stocks, which prevents us from, from investing in the whole sector. So um, we, see, the investors here are pretty comfortable with, with this kind of returns, which
which we can uh, uh, provide, which we can uh, under-promise and over-deliver. Right. What would be the other yardsticks, if you could share with us, sir? I know I'm deviating uh, from that. Under this Sharia fund, what are the other preventive uh, measures that you have to keep in mind? See, under the, the, the Sharia fund, uh, we, we will have to uh, invest in, in uh, we'll have to keep away a lot of stocks. For example, we, we have to, uh, uh, from the investable universe of stocks, we'd only look at those companies uh, which do not uh, deal in alcohol, tobacco, or pork-related products. We can't look at the financial services sector, like conventional banking, bonds, options, futures, short sale contracts, and preferred stock. Neither can we look at the entertainment sector, like hotels, gaming, cinema, music, and also the different sector where arms, munitions, and weaponry is manufactured. And then we have certain filters which... Uh, make the application of uh, investment possible for us. And some of these filters, for example, say that the total debt of the company divided by, say, the trailing 12-month average market cap should be less than 30%. In addition, the sum of a company's cash and interest-bearing securities divided by a trailing 12-month average market cap sh should also be less than 30%. And the revenues from forbidden elements divided by the total revenues should be less than 5%. So we have these limitations. Within that, we are looking at a conservative return. Right. Uh, and yet you are interested. Obviously, the interest must be huge. Mr. Williams, give us a sense. Uh, you're looking at $170 million right now. What does this tell you of the overall interest in the Middle East as far as the Indian equity markets is concerned? What would be your synopsis of the situation? Now, see, as far as Islamic investment is concerned, there is, there is a growing demand for, for Sharia products. Now, uh, investing in equities of companies are strongly encouraged by Sharia. Now, then as far as uh, the Sharia compliant equity funds are concerned, you will, you will find that globally there is about 100 uh, or so funds which, which manages an assets of $5 billion. Now, there is growing interest in these kind of products. But then the perception of India has changed dramatically over the last decade. And in the region, as a former American ambassador says, the center of gravity is moving to eastward to Asia, away from Europe and North America, and India will be the motor force in globalization. Now, this reality has begun to sink in, even in the Middle East region. And the India growth story has attracted investors around the world. And while the investment flow from the Middle East has only just begun, no region in the world can afford to ignore an economy like India, which accounts for nearly 5.9% of the global GDP. Right, that's a very bullish comment coming in, Mr.